Hi guys, it's Mandy from Mandy Lee Plays and in today's video, I want to share with you guys my gaming pickup. So this is for the month of April, May, and June. I got a lot of games, especially in June because that was my birthday month. So. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Now the first game is actually one I got really recently. It actually has the plastic and that is for Neptunia Girl Maker Revolution. Now this game is honestly something I didn't even know existed, but I came across this review for Neptunia from JRPG Jungle. And ever since I saw that, I was locked in, mainly because the premise is really, really wild. Those of you who don't know, Neptunia is about console wars. You heard that right here, folks. It's about console wars. The game follows Neptunia being tasked with reviving fallen game makers, so it's your job to make the best gaming corporation there ever was. Now some of the characters in these games are based off console, so you got a Switch representative, a PlayStation one, an Xbox one, they're all personified by different characters. Overall, I am looking for a nice slice of life game, and this one seems like it's gonna be that type of game, and I'm looking forward to playing it, and I'll let you guys know how it is. Next game on the list is Endless Oceans Luminos. Now this game is not a very popular game and I understand why, but honestly, I really enjoyed it. It is really, really relaxing. So the whole premise of this game is you're a scuba diver discovering the ocean and it's up to you to document different fishes, find treasure and other things of that nature. Now where a lot of people don't like it is because it's very, very boring, mainly because the story is really, really bad. I wouldn't even call it a story. It's more like different tasks that you have to do. But besides that, if you just do the free-for-all swimming, it is very relaxing. I love to discover new fish. Now, these fish are actually fish in real life, except for a few of them. And when you scan them, it also gives you a little history about the fish and a description of it. That was really fun for me. I live in Florida. Marine biology is drilled into our heads since elementary school, but I do understand why a lot of people might not think it's fun or relaxing. I might even say it's a good cozy game, mainly because it's just you, the water, and the fishes. I actually scanned most of the fishes, I'm only missing a few of them. Alrighty, the next game on the list is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Indeed, this is the year of Mario RPGs. Now, I did play the original version of The Thousand Year Door like about a year and a half ago, so the game is still fresh in my mind. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of need a cooldown time before playing a game again so I'm not really focused on playing this game right now but I'm so happy that it exists and when I'm in the mood to play Paper Mario the Dozen Year Door I will definitely be playing this one. Now there is a lot of quality of life changes to the remake like there's different pipes that lead you directly to the area that you want to go there's not a lot of backtracking and the game looks so gorgeous and I hope anyone new to the Dozen Year Door really enjoys it because it is a masterpiece. Next game I got in the last Switch game is is neon white. This was recommended to me by a friend and it is really really cool. I haven't finished it yet and the beauty of this game is it's easy to get back into the swing of things. It's an indie title so if you're interested please show some support and give it a try and it wasn't that expensive. I think the physical copy was about $20 and the digital version is way cheaper. Oh I almost forgot I did get two digital games that were actually game codes. The first one is Monster Hunter Stories that was given to me by Capcom. So thank you Capcom. And I actually beat the game. It is very, very short, but it's such a charming game and it's just so adorable. And Monster Hunter Stories is a spin-off of the mainline Monster Hunter games. This one mainly focuses on the bond between monsters and their writers instead of being a hunter hunting for monsters. Now I'm going to go into more detail when I cover this game in my gaming wrap up. But for now, it's a very charming, cute little game and I highly recommend it. And the next game on the list is Luigi's Mansion 2. This code was given to me by Nintendo. So thank you, Nintendo. Now I'm streaming this game currently and I'm just having a blast. If you guys don't know, the Luigi Mansion games is basically Nintendo's take on Ghostbusters. So Luigi is tasked to go inside different haunted places to collect some ghosts or any other doohad that Professor E. Gag wants. In Luigi's Mansion 2, you're tasked with also getting the pieces of the Dark Moon because without the dark moon, the ghost will become hostile and Professor E. Gag needs some free labor. Now on to the PlayStation games. So the first game on this list is The Legend of Heroes 
Trails of Cold Steel. This is the first game in the Cold Steel series, but there is something different about this case. There is a Peggy 12 symbol on it. So it's essentially the ESRB rating in Europe. And I don't live in wow. Europe. The reason I got this copy is because it is really hard to find a physical version of Cold Steel for the US. I don't know why. I decided to just get the European one. It's not that different, honestly. So while I am a physical collector, I'm not really that picky. I did start this game and I'm absolutely loving the school setting. I love school settings when it comes to video games and it reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy Type-0 which is my favorite Final Fantasy game because of the school setting. So what is this game about? This game follows the protagonist Reen as he adventures to an academy that specializes in training young soldiers for the war and it's very very prestigious. And you are in this special class that is a mix between between the elite class and the working or middle class. And honestly, I didn't really see the big deal. But in this universe, class seems to be really important. Right now, I'm finishing up chapter one and it's been really, really fun. But I will say it is kind of a slow burn, but I'm really enjoying it. The characters so far are really, really good. Well, besides this guy with green hair, I cannot stand him. He's just so annoying. Now the gameplay is a turn-based combat and it's really interesting because there's a lot of different things going on and so far I'm still learning the gameplay mechanics but overall I'm really enjoying it so I can't wait to continue Cold Steel. Speaking of continuing I have The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2 and like the first one it does have the Peggy 12 instead of the ESRB but I bought this one because I didn't want it to go out of stock in case I really like the Cold Steel series and it just disappears so I picked the first one and the second one together. The next game on my list is Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Now the main reason why I got this game is because I love weird spin-off Final Fantasy games. I mean, Final Fantasy Type-0 is my favorite Final Fantasy game, so I thought I would give this one a try. A lot of people say it's bad, but they kind of describe it as it's really bad that it's so good, mainly because the game is really, really funny. I am sure you guys have seen the meme. If you haven't, I'll play it right here. When are we gonna fight Chaos? All I care about is seeing Chaos dead. Looks like Chaos has been waiting for us. Chaos. We're here to kill Chaos. Bullshit. So yeah, now for the story, this game takes place at the very, very beginning of the Final Fantasy universe. In this game, you explore the origin story of the main baddie in Final Fantasy 1, and that is Chaos. Now, I don't know when I'm gonna get to this game, but I'm still really excited to try it out. Next game on my list is Booty Blade, I mean, Stellar Blade. Y'all know about this game at this point, but I picked it up because it looks really, really good, and I do like the action gameplay. Now, this game had a ton of controversies, and. I won't get into it here, but basically I was always excited for this game. It's just with the whole controversies and stuff, it kind of dwindled my excitement of it, mainly because I just didn't want to participate in the culture and discourse that was surrounding this game. That discourse was just weird. So I didn't buy it day one, but I did manage to pick it up and I'm actually really excited to play it. Next game on the list is Shin Megami Tensei Vengeance. When they announced it, I was really pissed because I felt like I played the beta version of Shin Megami Tensei 5, and not gonna lie, I did feel swindled. But I've heard a lot of people say this is a good game and it does add a lot of new content to the game. So while I am upset, I'm not as upset as I used to be. And plus the steelbook is really, really cool. I didn't get the Switch version because I didn't wanna play in 30 FPS. I, I kinda wanted to enjoy the luxury of 60 FPS and I do own the first one on the switch and I did make a before you buy video for this game so please check it out if you want to know more so that is it for the games but we are not done I still have a few things first I have is the split pad compact for the Nintendo switch now this one is the EV style as you can see here it's very very beautiful and here is what it looks like on the switch it is super super comfortable I'm always on the lookout for 
for alternative ways to play handheld because the joy cons are just so so uncomfortable and these flip pads are just fantastic i love it now there is a downside mainly with the joy con features so this doesn't have the hd rumble that the joy cons have and there's also nowhere to put your amiibos so keep that in mind but other than that this thing is fantastic i, I love it so so much and it looks really really cute to boot now the next thing i got is a t-shirt this is from uniqlo I think that's how it's pronounced and oh my god it is so cute so basically we have a little moogle sipping on some wine or something and i just love the design the only downside about this shirt is they didn't have lady sizes so this is a male shirt and it's pretty baggy now the last thing on this list is something i'm really excited to share with you guys my atelier riza 3 figurine i am really excited to open it and set her up she is actually going in this cube sorry kirby you're gonna have to have a roommate now i'm not sure if i want to make this a dedicated atelier shelf or if i just want to have the figurine with other games i'm not sure yet alrighty folks that is the end of my pickups i hope you guys enjoyed please let me know any pickups that you guys got i would love to hear it please like this video if you like and if you like my content and would love to see more then please hit that subscribe button i would appreciate it i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day and as always play a good game peace peace